Therein lies the problem. Yeah, yeah. I can see that. Especially because you can use Breakthrough Skill twice. Yep. And just being able to stop that stuff that happens on your turn with it. Mm. And there's a lot more of it than you think. We saw a lot of that with the Mermail match earlier today. Uh, wow. Summoning out. This, this dice is only rolling threes. Well, there we go. We got a one, and Bill McCavitt has decided to go first. We're ready to go. Looks like our duelists are ready to go. Okay, we have one hour from now. And it looks like we've got those monsters again on Bill McCavitt's side, whereas now has the opposite issue. He doesn't seem to have any monsters. Bill's got three. Bill isn't in a massively bad position. No. Nope. One of them is at least a special summon trick from the deck. One's from the graveyard. And, you know, it could always be... Oh, no, it is infestation infection, huh? Mm-hmm. I always get the Evil Swarm mixed up. They've got such sinister names. Yeah. It's why they're the Evil Swarm, I suppose. It's kind of in the name. A face-down card, both a monster and a spell or trap, is set to Bill's side of the field. And now Murakami is up, and he picked up, looks like Evil Swarm and Dragora, which is one of those monsters with the Cyber Dragon Claws that we were talking about earlier. Yeah. Dark Hole starts things off very strong, taking Gear Giyama right out of the picture. Even if it were something like a hand, it would still be a strong play. And even though there isn't a huge amount of follow-up here, just the Mandragora, you still feel good when you get that first turn Gear Gear Armor off the board. 1550 from Mandragora. It's going to make life difficult for our scorekeepers, yeah. keeping all those 50s <laughs> straight. making life a little difficult for our duelists themselves, it seems. Have you ever had a situation where you just ran into something with a 50 just to get the 50 out of your life points? Yes. I don't blame you. Well, there was a card with something like 73. Castle of Dark Illusions yeah. has a 20 in it. Two face down cards and now Murakami's turn and plays back to Bill who summons Girgi Arsenal. Declares an attack on the 1550 Evil Swarm Mandragora. That's interesting because Murakami has a breakthrough skill face down that he could use to kick Girgi Arsenal back down to 1500, at yeah. which point that 50 would come in exactly handy. Instead, it appears he flips Infestation Infection. And he's going to use it to get a different monster from his deck. He's thinking about it, and he goes with... Heliotrope. Is that Heliotrope? Mm-hmm. So dual terminal, very shiny. I couldn't even tell that it was a normal monster. Yeah. That'll do it for the searching for this turn, though. It's still the battle phase, though. I and have Bill can get in a little early damage as well. I have never noticed that Heliotrope's text is written backwards. Yep. It's actually the same thing on the Japanese version of the card as well. Oh, wow. So it took a little thinking to figure out exactly how we were going to port that over to the English version of the card. Oh, the needle sailing in hand. It's an interesting main deck choice. 
Pretty good against large fields, though. Like Gear Gear when it kicked off. So maybe he was playing it for a mirror? Or even Infernity? Probably Infernity. Yeah. It could also work against Badolce as well. Yeah. It's just an all round good card. The attack continues, 1700 damage from Gear Gear Arsenal, and in main phase two, he tributes it. And he thinks about getting Gear Gear Armor. But he probably realizes that the reason that Heliotrope was the pick there off Infestation Infection was that blasted 50 in its attack points. That would help it swing over Gear Gear Armor. Yes. Yeah, he goes with the armor anyway. My reasoning in doing something like that is if I can flip it face down now, yep. at least I'll get one search off of it. At least one. If Murakarmi allows it. He did save the breakthrough skill. He did. I don't know that I'd use it to stop Gear Gear Armor from flipping down, though. I'm pretty sure there are more important things you can do with your breakthrough yeah. skill. Please keep coming back. It's so slippery. And he flips. Oh. Yeah. He tries easy. to flip it face down, but now goes ahead and uses the breakthrough skill right there. He probably gets the feeling that McCavitt's hand is extremely weak and it's better in this case, to stop the armor from flipping face down and attack it without him getting another search. Now comes the Heliotrope. Heliotrope attacks Geary armor. And Torrential Tribute. It does not attack, it is summoned. And Torrential Tribute is activated. In response, the effect of the Infestation Infection is used again, and Heliotrope escapes off to the deck. This time being replaced with... have the spotter's guide for evil swarms. No, me neither. I thought it looked evil swarm caster, yes, for the extra normal summon. Caster very useful for facilitating uh, XE summons. And along with the Curriculum that he has in his hand, he could start getting a nice supply of monsters. He really needs just about one more somewhere to really set things off. Some brief confusion, but we've got all, our, all, our, all of our Evil Swarm in a row here. And Murakami sets two face down cards to end his turn. Cavett eyeing that soul charge. Thinking about whether or not he wants to play it into two unknown face down cards. And he's doing it anyway. He does. He brings back both Gear Gear Armors. 
not quite the whole team, but if he can leave them on the field for long enough, he can start to get back into this. Unfortunately, he cost him 2,000 life points to do that. Mm, and Murakami just picked up Evil Swarm Mandragora, exactly what he wanted to see. Caster is next, and Needle Sticking Ceiling up. is activated. Four monsters are on the field, so all the face-up ones will be destroyed. That said, Infestation Infection is still there, and Murakami can use it to save one of his monsters and get another one from the deck. And he still has an extra normal summon. Needle Ceiling may not wind up doing its job quite as intended. Infestation Infection is not used, and the question now is, even though Caster was destroyed, still I, can I still get my extra normal summon? And because it was summoned successfully, you can. And we now see why he didn't use the Infestation Infection. It's so that he had both a card to banish and a card to add to his hand for Evil Swarm Krikion's effect, which gives him yet another extra normal summon. With two level four Evil Swarm monsters, Murakami dives into his extra deck and wishes he was playing Bujin <laughs> so that he could clear out both of those Gear Gear Armors in one blow. What's he gonna go for? There's the XC summon. And activates the effect of Ophion. Of Evil Swarm Ophion. Retrieving Infestation Pandemic from his deck. Now, you can't replace Mystical Space Typhoon with Forbidden Lands. You can't really replace it with Infestation Infection either. No. But you can replace Forbidden Lands with Infestation Infection. Yes. It protects the entire team of Evil Swarm monsters from spells and traps for a turn. Murakami, incidentally, knows this and is playing the full complement of Mystical Space Typhoons as well. Not super relevant at the moment because McCavitt is out of traps for the moment. It's just one of those cards to hold on to. Yep. As long as you have it, you're alright. And he knows that he doesn't need both Xyz materials on Ophion to keep the Special summon prevention going. I guess there aren't any such monsters in the Cavett's deck. So we can safely search out both pandemics, which gives two turns of protection to his entire team and takes two cards out of the deck that he doesn't have to draw. Now two Gigiano Mark IIs are entering Bill's hand. Gigiano Mark II, a lot of people forget it can summon from your hand as well. Yeah. question is, what is McCavitt going to pull out that is bigger than the 2550 Evil Swarm Ophion? Those 50s rearing their ugly heads again. From the looks of things, his best bet would be an Evil Swarm Exciton Knight to just clear the whole field out. That's what I was thinking. Kane Gorgon, honorable mention for having a 50 in his attack points, but still too low. <laughs> Girgi armor flip face up. Girgi accelerator joins it. And it 
it looks like the decision is between Silent Honor Arc and Evil Swarm Exciton Knight. Yeah, at the moment it looks like an Exciton Knight it actually put him on equal cards. He's got to get past all the traps first. Oh. And that is not going to go well for the player from Japan. The effect was activated, targeting Evil Swarm Ophion, and Murakami declared a chain to the effect with Forbidden Dress. Unfortunately, Forbidden Dress can't go back in time and untarget things that have already been targeted. So the end result of this one, once everything is said and done, is that the Ophion is going to be absorbed, and Murakami is going to be down a, for a Forbidden Dress. Basically just a case of if he waited too long to activate the Forbidden Dress, you'd have to activate it straight away. But he did not. Interesting note for Silent Honor Arc. If it is not on the field at all, like say he gets destroyed by Infernity Break or something before its effect resolves, targeted monster stays where it is. Yeah, nothing happens. If it's flipped face down, though, still absorbed. Oh. Huh. I guess that makes sense, because it's still on the field. Yep, you can have Xyz materials on a face down card. Happens every time Book of Moon gets flipped. Yep. And now, the Xyz monster has become the Xyz material, and the path to Murakami's life points is open. Not quite yet. Girgiano Mark II comes down on the Cavett side of the field. And he quickly checks his extra deck before deciding what to special summon with it. Considering whether or not he wants to summon that other Gugiano. Well, when the choice is a card in your hand versus getting a card back from your graveyard, it's usually not much of a choice at all, and Girgi Armor returns to the field. It's flipped face down, first thing first, and then Girgi Armor Mark II attacks directly. Kami takes a look at his graveyard. Really thinking about that? He does Call run one Call of the Haunted, which he has there. He goes ahead and uses it. And it's targeting. That is... It's like a caster. It Whatever does. it is, it's back in the graveyard now. A replay occurred because a monster appeared on the defender side of the field. Girgiano Mark II's attack was cancelled and cannot be redeclared. And Silent Honor Arc takes down the Evil Swarm monster. Interesting that Murakami did not decide to shuffle it back into the deck to get another Kariki on. Yeah. Now, the monster's been destroyed, so Call the Haunted would go as well. Correct. Yeah, there we go. And Murakami seems pretty happy about his draw. He saw it and quickly hit it and went straight to the graveyard. Because he's drawn another Curriculum. I guess there's no need to search one out when the next one's on top of your deck. Yep. There's a second one. Plays that as well. And then takes a look at his extra deck. Silent Honor Arc is left in attack position, so he could always arc back the arc. And it looks like that's what he wants to do. Arc Fiendish tries chain. to take arc, but Fiendish Chain shuts that down. And that inability to attack comes into play here as well, since 
The Cabot has that other gear piano in his hand, and suddenly the liability of a Mark II on the field can easily turn into a rank three XC summon. Gear gear arm is flipped. At this point, I'd be figuring out, can I win this turn? Well, it depends on the last face down card. But in general, I would say that you can. That it is, in fact, possible. Depends, actually, on uh, whether or not he's got another Silent Honor Arc in his extra deck. Uh, which he does not. You've got the Accelerator. And you've got the other gear piano. And yeah. between all of them, you can make a second Silent Honor Arc to absorb Murakami's Silent Honor Arc and then still have a summon left over to get the last 2,000 damage you need. Yeah. Is that a... Gigant Tex goes with Gear Gigant. Still a very powerful card. Yep, even if you can't win this turn, you can still do a lot of damage and set yourself up to win on the next turn. Especially because now does not have any cards in hand. Spent both of them to make that Silent Honor arc. Goes with Girgano Mark II. Looking to load up on summons, it seems. Girgano Mark II is next. Activates its effect. Girgi Accelerator is in defense position. And the two Girgianos are combined for wind ups and lines. Yeah. The second Accelerator is special summoned. Turns into. Yeah, he's trying to figure out if he can win this turn. Kyrgy Accelerator, very useful. Interesting to note, though, that if Gear Gigant was his only monster there, he could not special summon the Gyrgy Accelerator. No. It is not a Gyrgy monster. And I do believe that, that oh. this is own Ken Gorgon. How ironic. Yeah. 50s versus 50s. Ken Gorgon attacks. The rest of the monsters attack as well. Yeah. And there's and there a slight bit of confusion over the math, but that will do it for game one. Bill McCavitt just starts off very strong. Even Extremely. with three monsters in his hand, he got the cards he needed to shut down Nal Murakami. Even with the three monsters in his hand, he had the ability to be able to go offensive straight away. Yep, the soul charge really helped there. Yeah. That is what kept him in this one, because it looked pretty bad at first when his Gear Gear Armor is getting run down by Heliotrope. And in the end, Murakami never got the chance to use the second effect of his breakthrough skill in that one. Okay. So it was siding. As for side decking, I see mind crushes yeah. on Bill McCavitt's side. They do a lot of searching in Evil Swarm, and in addition to the searching, they also do a lot of adding cards back to their hand. Uh, with Curriculum. So I think it's kind of an easy bet that Mind Crush is going to come in. Flying C actually also has applications in this matchup. Yes, it does. Since without the Xyz monsters, the Evil Swarm are just a bunch of guys with 50 in their attack points. It's that a pretty good 50. It's a 50 up instead of a 50 down. But still. Yep. It's 
not a whole lot if you have to deal with monsters from the extra deck. Necro Valley is interesting. Necro Valley would be interesting. Stop things from being banished. So Kirkion's effect to banish something from the graveyard and do all that would work. On the other side, well, there's not a whole lot for this particular matchup. No. I don't know that he was really expecting it. I mean, Vanity's Emptiness is kind of a catch-all that you can put in against most decks in this format or any format, since Special Summoning is so prevalent. Uh, he could put in the Effect Veilers, just try and shut down the Armors. Well, the Veilers could help shut down Armors, shut down the uh, Girgianos. Having the Girgiano in that last one helped him get all the monsters that he needed to win the game in that last turn. Uh, dimensional Fissure. I'm not certain how much Dimensional Fissure really does. Like, it'll stop your Gigant from getting cards back from the graveyard. Yeah. But a lot of times they go there as Exceeds Material anyways. True. So they would hit the graveyard. I don't really know that Nal has a lot of action in the side deck for this one. Hmm. From his extra deck, is there anything he could do differently? a whole lot. I just think this isn't the matchup that Al Murakami wants to see. No. And he's going to have to play really well if he wants to get back in it. Now we're seeing another Gear Gear deck that works well with only one Gear Gear Gear. Yep. And the interesting thing is how well they use all the Mark II's in their deck. Yeah. Good use of the actual Girgianos themselves. A lot of duelists don't appreciate Girgiano and Girgiano Mark II as cards. And that's part of, I think, why they dropped the deck and didn't have success with it. There's a lot of plays that only open up when you have the two Girgianos available. All right, and we are ready for the second game. After a brief check, we're ready to go, and now Murakami starts things off with Evil Swarm Caster. Joining it is Mandragora. And together they form the rank four. Evil Swarm Ophion. Detaching the Castor to go ahead and search his deck for an infestation card. Pandemic is the first search. That'll protect against you know, Dark Hole, Book yeah. Moon, etc. The question on my mind is if that Evil Swarm Ophion makes it to next turn, what's the next search? Do you get the other Pandemic or do you get Infestation, Infection, and start trying to fix your hand? I guess it depends what happens. Now, it depends on if you have to use the first one, I suppose. There's also the fact that if there's a massive amount of back row, yeah. you, you might think about getting a second just in case it's on there. Yeah. It's actually a situation where Fiendish Chain would be very good for McCabot. Yeah. Because Murakami would have to use the, the uh, Pandemic right then to get the second one out, but then as soon as the first one runs off, Ophion's negated. Yeah. You'd have to play it again right away next turn if you wanted to get it back. That's the pandemic, and that's all for the first turn. Not a Gear, the armor, hand. Thunder King Ryo, Black Horn of Heaven, Neil Sealing, Soul Charge, Book of Moon. That actually looks very promising. Black Horn of Heaven is especially good in this matchup. Kind of interested that he left the Neil Sealings in. He had success with them in the first duel, but when all of the monsters start you know, being consolidated already. The first turn, Ophion getting Pandemic. Needle Sealing loses a lot of value when you know it's probably going to be negated. Yeah. That looks like a Thunderbird to me. That's the one. Evil Swarm Thunderbird. And Ophion attacks.
Quick check on the hand. And gear gear armor is flipped face up. Armor effect activates. Gavin picks up gear gear accelerator. And gear 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 armor is destroyed. Taking the accelerator to try to make a strong counterplay on his next turn. There's only one spell or trap card down on Murakami's side of the field, and given that he searched for one spell and trap card, it's pretty obvious to McCabot which card that is. Yeah. So he knows that the opportunity is now if he wants to make a counter Xyz play. Murakami's in that situation we talked about before, where you have too many monsters and not enough opportunities to play them. Even with the many evil swarm effects that grant extra summons. Thunderbird attacks directly. 1650. Mm, with the ability to run away and hide. And go up to 1950, if the case may, or if the need arises. So all the evil swarm are evil versions of other cards. Yes. Yes. So what's the what's the Thunderbird? Uh, I think it's a Mist Valley card. Mist Valley Thunderbird. It could be. We can look that up later. Yeah. I know Ophion. He's Gungnir. Ophion is. Uh, Gungnir. Is Ice it? Barrier Dragon. Oh. Uh, level 7 Synchro. Okay. Ouroboros is Trisha level 9. See, I thought it looked a lot like... Oh, what's it called? Horus. Oh, it's all dual terminal monsters, though. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, the Evil Swarm corrupt all the other dual terminal monsters and... That makes sense. Yeah, do the thing. One nice touch on Ophion's art that I always liked is that his wings are made out of ice. Yeah. So you kind of tell what he used to be. It's very cool. And there's the Silent Hunter Rock. Yep, we got the counter Xyz play we were expecting, and Evil Swarm of Thunderbird very wisely decides to run away to live and fight another day. And because McCavitt was able to make that play without using a Soul Charge, he's able to attack directly for 2100 as well. And he still has his Soul Charge. Yep, and plenty of things to bring back with it now, as Murakami picks up another monster. Got the Thunderbird still chilling out there. Look at all those dual terminal cards. Oh, he's got double heliotrope. He has. He's got two hand. heliotrope. He's got a carry cone and a th and Thunderbird still. That's unfortunate because it means not only is there another normal monster in his deck, there's also the rescue rabbit, which no longer does you any good. Yeah. And the question is, hey, wait a minute. Evil Swarm, Thunderbird, supposed to come back. Let's go ahead and bring up Evil Swarm, Thunderbird, let everybody read the card. During the next standby phase, return this card banished by this effect to the field, and if you do, it gains 300 attack. It's not optional, so we do. It's also not until the end of the turn. It's the uh, next standby phase. Mm -hmm. This is the next standby phase because he used it on the Cavett's turn. So it should return here. I guess the judgment call here is how much information has been gained by not having the Evil Swarm Thunderbird return. Yeah. And should it remain out of play as a result. Okay. Yeah. It is, it's an interesting situation. But, I mean, that's to be expected a little bit. 
in the Dragon Duel class, not everybody has... Well, I mean, you've got the language barrier to yeah. deal with, and we've been able to see in this match that's been a little bit of a struggle to figure out you know, what's going on, when it's happening. And it's looking now like we're going to go ahead and put the Thunderbird back on the field, because it is mandatory. Mm -hmm. There's no not bringing it back. Yeah, you have to bring it back. And it comes back with an extra 300 attack points. Kirkion joins it. Extra normal summon brings out Caster. Caster brings another extra normal summon of one of the heliotropes. And all of a sudden, Murakami's been able to empty his hand almost completely of monsters. And he's got that pandemic waiting just in case he sees the needle ceiling again. That's the great thing about being able to get off that counter play yeah. to take Ophion off the field so that Murakami is put in a position where he has to put enough monsters on the field for Needle Sealing to make a difference again. That could be big in McCavitt's chances to win this one. I'm assuming, though, if you chain two Infestation Pandemic, you'll still get an effect of. Correct. So... You could do this very cleverly. Yeah, the trick is to get Murakami to activate his Pandemic first. First EXE summons, though. To grab another Ophion. Only to be denied by Black Horn of Heaven. Now, it does still leave two level 4 monsters on the field, which could be used to make another Silent Honor arc. Yeah. We can see very much the same play we did last time, where Ark fights Ark. Although, surely he could Book of Moon his own Ark. Just up the Ark. He'd have to Book of Moon the opponents before he could activate it. Because we actually just talked about this. Yeah. If you do activate the effect and your Ark gets slipped face down, it still eats it. It's got a different Evil Swarm in mind this time, though. That is Evil Swarm Bahamut. That's the evil version of Brianak, 2350 attack, to Brianak's 2300. And that lets you detach materials and discard L swarms from your hand to take control of enemy monsters. Now it's interesting that you do target with the effect, but you don't discard as a cost. So your opponent doesn't see what you're getting rid of until the effect resolves. It's another way that you can hide as much information as possible. Yeah. Sign on our arc, text directly. Unfortunately, needle sealing now becomes quite useless. Direct attack from Muhammad as well. That's a large chunk of damage in addition to losing his arc. But McCavick does still have that soul charge in hand. And he could engineer a situation where his needle sealing becomes useful again. If he brings back gear he armors, flips them down first, and then flips up the needle sealing. Yeah. Because we saw the pandemic get used to block Book of Moon. The thing is, though, that uh, 101 still has a material. It does. It's one of the worries. Although he can't bring back... He can only bring back one. He has a 1900 attack. Or life, even. Got Girgiano in his hand as well. The priority here is getting something that is bigger than... Bahamut. Like, you have to get rid of Bahamut yeah. so that you just don't get your monster stolen. Soul Charge for one. It's Girgi Accelerator. Girgiano is next, and it swaps out for... Another Giga Accelerator.
Checks the graveyard briefly before deciding on what to see summon. And he goes with Kane Gorgon. And once again, trying to attack with Soul Charge. It's kind of been yeah, it's a, it's a, it's every a single time thing. he shows up. Can't do it though. Couldn't do it last round, couldn't do it round before that. Goes ahead and activates the Bahamut. There's only one legal target here. So he is forced to hand over Kane Gorgon. And he didn't just concede right there because there was always a chance that Murakami would have just played another monster for no reason um. and fallen right into the needle ceiling. The problem is then he would have got the needle ceiling, but the 101 would still have the material. Yep. So, regardless, it was, it was a lost cause. But... Just in case, though. Now didn't take any damage that game. Yeah, it was a complete turnaround from the first time. Yeah. And it looks like... I think I see effect failures in there. So that looks like it is what Murakami sided in. Probably will keep them in for this game. Good thing about Girgi is that you don't really need the effect failure on the first turn against it. Yeah. So you're okay going second and taking the extra card to give you another shot to draw it. seems like side decking was swift. I don't think anybody really wanted to make a change. No, no. I mean, um, it obviously all worked for now. Yep. But, game three, anything can happen. Well, it is the decider. Shuffling is really an acquired skill. Yeah. I never realized how long it took me to learn how to shuffle yeah, you, and you, do it properly. Like, there was this giant period of time where I just didn't know how to do it. I don't ever think I learned until I started playing Yu-Gi-Oh! Yeah, and there's so many different types of shuffling. No. Nope. I didn't, could, couldn't do any of the fancy stuff, like even riffling it. You don't want to riffle Yu-Gi-Oh! cards. Well, yeah. Marked Card City. because the problem I had with Europeans whenever I talked about shuffling Matt got very angry so he, like told me that, he told me that it wasn't shuffling interesting good. see it's such an important part of the game I mean you shuffle yes. constantly with all the search this effects. is what I'm saying gotta give it its due sometime if we're not gonna do that at the world championship then when 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 Thunder King Ryo Wow, three His first down for Bill McCavitt, and Murakami is open three of a kind Thunderbirds, along with Mirror Force and Torrential Tribute. A full house. And an infestation pandemic, in which he set. Thunderbirds over mass removal cards. One Thunderbird hits the field. Battle phase is declared, and. Doesn't say he's going to attack. Yes. He didn't quite say he was going to attack. Murakami reveals the mirror force. And, you know, it doesn't really change things. So McCavit attacks anyways. Mirror force is activated. Book of Moon to Zen card. Book of Moon is chained. Mm, does to that keep Thunder King around? Jump the attack? Can you then activate Thunderbird's effect? I think that's what they're discussing. Uh, it's when a card effect, Carter effect is activated. So Thunder uh, Thunderbird can still work. Yeah. Thunder King is safe, though, because it's no longer in attack position. And is joined by a face-down monster and another Speller Trap. Murakami's up. And he should remember... Yep, he does, in fact, remember his Thunderbird this time. And it comes back at 1950. It's like a Heliotrope 
is joining it for two 1950 attack monsters. Thunder King gets blasted. Girgiano follows, and it doesn't look like Cavett has a particularly strong hand at this point. Uh, none of those cards that our analysts are talking about are the perfect opening cards. No, yeah. no gear, 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 armor, that sort of thing. Oh, main phase two, we have an Xyz summon. We're going for the overlay network. Ophion comes down, but it's blasted by Blackhorn of Heaven before it can reach the field. Shame. And that really kind of turns the tides of the duel. Now still does have a uh, Treasure Tribute set. Cavett Scott, Gear the Arsenal. But it's blown away by Torrential Tribute before he can attack or get to his Gear Gear Gear. The second Evil Thunderbird, Evil Swarm Thunderbird, steps up to bat. Cavett thinks about his solemn warning for a second. And then two. and then decides to use it to negate the summon of the Thunderbird. At this point, he's just trying to keep monsters off of Murakami's field, as one monster quickly balloons into two, which turns into an Xyz monster. Two cards face down, ends Murakami's turn, and the Cavett draws and sets a monster. Caster comes down on Murakami's side of the field, and it's joined by a Thunderbird. looking at his Acti deck, then decides to attack over. Decides to attack instead, and he hits Girgi Accelerator, which brings back Girgi Arsenal to the hand. Thunderbird, after strike one, swings again, and now he's batting 1650. Now, now has a... Uh there's two monsters, thinking about that, see someone. But of course... He's got both the Pandemic and the Mirror Force, so he probably feels safe having already seen one Black Horn of Heaven, but what he doesn't know is that the other one's waiting for him. And the second Ophion there meets the same fate as the first, Black Horn of Heaven negating the summon. And now things are looking up for Bill McCavitt. Gary Arsenal cool. summoned, but this time gets hit by Mirror Force. And Murakami has never been happier to see a normal monster in his life as Evil Swarm Heliotrope comes off the top of the deck for another 1950. Again, now taking no damages. Best game at all. Yeah, it picks up a trap. Takes a quick look at his graveyard. What's this on him? And he goes with another Girgi Arsenal. This one he tributes right away. It seems to be deciding between Girgi Accelerator or Girgi Armor. Neither one is going to stand up to the Heliotrope. But both will get him another card back when they go down in battle. And one of the things that you can't really do with, well, one thing where Fiendish Chain kind of fails you, that has to target effect monster. Yeah. It's not going to help you here. Girgi Accelerator is the play. You have kind of got the advantage that not many people actually play normal monsters. Yep, or even just non-effect monsters. And he actually has another one. In addition to Heliotropes in his main deck, he's running Gem Knight Pearl in his extra deck. 2600. Oh yeah. Rank 4 monster. It's non-effect. Shit big. Ever seen somebody revive Gem Knight Pearl with Digusto Emerald? No. It's happened. Really? Yep. Wow. Is that one the non-effect special summon doesn't come into play that often. But when it does, whoever does it feels really clever. Here the accelerator, back to the graveyard. 
And replacing it is Girgi Arsenal in the Cavett's hand. Cavett sets a monster. Murakami activates Dark Hole and chains with Infestation Pandemic to save his own monster. If he had another monster, this would be it. But he'll have to settle for 1950 against a lone dust tornado. Again, just not looking good for Bill. Soul Charge now completely out of the equation, not even for one. Uh, all that's left is a Gear Arsenal in hand with a dust tornado. Just oh. have to see what he draws. He's got the dust. He needs another level four Gear Gear monster. Uh, it looks like he may have it. Well, he's got the arsenal, but he needs an accelerator, really. Dust tornado. Pop the forbidden dress. Dress is destroyed, but he's picked up Max C, it looks like. Arsenal's tributed off. Yep, there's the Max C. Armor's next. And he's just trying to stall out long enough to get to an accelerator plus level four play. Yeah. Because right now there are so few cards on the field that just one of them could break the game wide open. That said, there are still all those evil swim Krikions in Murakami's deck. Now, now he only needs actually, to take it right back. He only actually needs to draw one level four monster and the game's over. Plenty of them in the deck. 17 total monsters. Because Gaga Gaga Cowboy is the way to end games. That too. 450 life points left, that's not enough. Which you can't really think about that if you're McCavitt. And that's Mandragora. He's got it. But does he see the play? Yeah, that's that's it anyway, just tax. Goes to wow. tax anyways. Finish things finishes things up.